Hello again and welcome to Maritime Genie. Today's question is that why is it not required to inert the bunker tanks? This question first popped up in the year I think 2012 or 2013 and when I replied to this question it caused quite a bit of stir on the Facebook. <laughs> well and to my entire surprise I was looking for the answer of the same question on the internet and internet is filled up with the answers that did not satisfy me much. That is when I decided to make a video about this topic. I will try to answer this question in a very simple and straightforward manner. For the purpose of this video and for the purpose of making all of you understand it more clearly and easily, I have also downloaded the MSDS sheets of MGO and IFO that is from 180 to 380 centi strokes and I'll show all of these as references on the screen as the video progresses. The answer to this question lies in the file triangle. A fire triangle consists of three things. It has to be fuel, it has to be oxygen, and then of course, there has to be a source of heat or flame. If we eliminate any one of them, the fire triangle breaks and there is no further chance of a fire or an explosion. In this case, the case of the bunker tanks, the oxygen is there, source of heat can be or cannot be there, but the fuel is not there. Wait a minute, let me explain it to you. On your screens right now you must be looking at the msds of mgo and if you scroll down to section number five where it says fire fighting measures you can see it says flammable limits percentage by volume not determined why is it not determined that's one question that you should be asking from yourself and let's close it for a moment and go to the msds of fuel oil Right now, I'm showing you the MSTS of fuel oil. And if you look closely, it says heavy fuel oil 180, 380, sulfur grade 220, 2000, heavy fuel oil HS 180, 380, HK 220, 2000, and all this stuff. These are all the different grades of the fuel oil for which this MSTS is valid. If we scroll down to page number five, you will see two things. First of all, flammability, solid gas, not determined, not measured. Above it, is flash point that is more than 65 degrees celsius but the most important thing for the purpose of answer to this question that we are asking in today's video is just a little below it says upper lower flammability or explosive limits lfl almost equal to one percent and upper explosive limit almost equal to six percent this one percent and six percent is the percentage of hydrocarbons by volume have you ever measured how much hydrocarbon by percentage is present in a bunker tank? If you take your gas meter now, go to a bunker tank and start measuring the hydrocarbon percentage by volume in a bunker tank, it is going to yield a result of not more than 45 to 46% of LEL. 45 to 46% of LEL is not even half percent of a hydrocarbon by volume. And now that we already know that there is not even 1% of hydrocarbon by volume inside a bunker tank. Now let's get back to our fire triangle for a moment. We explained that one part of the triangle is oxygen. The other part of triangle is heat or a source of ignition. The third part that we said is fuel. When we talked about that fuel, we actually meant the flammable atmosphere inside a bunker tank. And now that we already know that it's going to be 45 to 46% of LEL inside a bunker tank, it's time to find out whether that can make a flammable mixture or not. Let's have a look at this flammability diagram. It says hydrocarbon gas percentage by volume on the right side. The bottom of this diagram or this graph is actually the oxygen percentage by the volume. And the red area that you can see which says flammable mixture is the portion where the flammable mixture can be formed. Now let's assume it's not going to be. For all practical purposes, it's not even possible. But just for understanding this, let's assume that you have around 20.9% of oxygen in your bunker tank's vapor space. Then if you draw a parallel line to the base, that is oxygen percentage by volume, it represents approximately 1.5% of hydrocarbon. Approximately. So that means that there has to be approximately 1.5% of hydrocarbon and 20.9% by volume of oxygen present in the bunker space of your tank to actually form a flammable mixture. And now that we have already determined that your bunker cannot contain 1% of hydrocarbons by volume, the flammable mixture is not going to form. And that's exactly why you do not need to inert your bunker tanks. However, whenever you are doing a bunker operation, it is advisable, it is inside your bunker checklists and you must measure the amount of LEL or hydrocarbon inside a bunker tank because you don't know what the supplier is going to do. He might supply you with the wrong bunkers. He might supply you with a bunker that has 1% of hydrocarbon. In that case, of course, different steps applies. 
and ask this next question that has popped up that is what happens if you have one percent of hydrocarbons in a bunker tank it requires another separate complete video of its kind so i'm not going to discuss that in this video but now as we are already talking about the flammable mixtures the flammability the hydrocarbon percentage the lel it's time to refer to escort as well if you have a look at escort then there are two chapters that are very important when you're trying to find out the answer to this question one is chapter one diagram 1.1 it is the flammability diagram and it is exactly the diagram that i showed to you on the screens a few moments ago this diagram will help you understand the flammability when a flammability mixture can be formed and when you have to take the actions to reduce that flammability and the other is chapter 2 section 7 that is 2.7 this section applies to residual fuel oils and the bunkers, of course. If you have a look at this section, this section lays down all the hazards that are associated with the residual fuel oils and obviously with the bunkers as well. And in a way, it also lays down all the precautions that you have to take to reduce or minimize all the hazards associated with the bunker fuels and the residual fuels. In all of this section, there is absolutely no mention of inerting a bunker tank. Now let's take a step back, just one small step back and let's see the old edition of the same Escort. I have it here on my iPad and let's have a look at it. The old edition of Escort had a complete chapter that was chapter number 24, which is the flammability hazards associated with the handling, storage and carriage of residual fuel oils. This chapter from the old escort has been completely taken down. It has been integrated into the chapter number two of the new escort. But there was one thing that was mentioned in chapter number 24 of the old escort, which is not mentioned here on the chapter number two of the new escort. And that is section 24.3.4, hazard reduction. It says the flammability of the headspace of a residual fuel oil tank should be monitored regularly, obviously. Should a measured value in excess of recommended levels be detected? IMO resolution A56514 refers to a level in excess of 50% of LFL. Now, I'll show you the IMO resolution A565 on your screens right now. This IMO resolution alpha 56514 was later translated by MSE and in their recommendations, they set the value where you have to take the precautions against forming a flammable mixture as at least 50% of LEL. And we have already discussed and came to a conclusion that your bunkers do not have LEL more than 50%. So that means the flammable mixture inside the headspace of a bunker tank cannot be formed. And as the chances of forming a flammable mixture inside the vapor space of a bunker tank are minimum to almost none, the inerting of bunker tanks is not required but then another question arises and it's a pretty interesting question i must say why do we have to inert the tanks when we carry fuel oil as a cargo i'm sure you must have done that most of you people should have done that i have also done that i have also carried fuel oil inside my cargo tanks and we still had to inert those cargo tanks well the answer is very simple when we are on ship we do not just follow the regulations laid out by the imo or by the company we follow all sorts of safety regulations that are even laid by the charters and even by the terminals. According to the IMO, there is no need of doing that. If we talk about the company regulations, then I'm sure your company must have the guidelines that how to discharge fuel oil without running the inert gas plant. But, and it's a big but, <laughs> when it comes to charters and terminals, 99.99% of charters and terminals want you to inert your cargo tanks for the purposes of extra safety. And we have to follow them. And that's probably the only reason you really have to inert your cargo tanks when you're carrying fuel oil as a cargo. Well, that brings us pretty much to the end of our video. And, uh, and I really hope that it must have been helpful in some way. If it was, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content of this kind. In case you have any questions regarding this video, anything that you might need to ask or need to say about the content that was in this video, feel free to mention all of that in the comments and I'll be very, very, very happy to reply. And please, I request you, I request all of you, do not send me messages on WhatsApp. Please write everything down in the comment section. I will reply it over here 
if there has to be a discussion make it fruitful make it fruitful not for yourself not just for me but for all the readers that's it that's it for today's video take very good care of yourself and happy learning